Hello, in this video we're going to have a look at how you can load a scene made by the Rube Box 2D editor into a Kirkus 2D application. And we're going to start with an empty project. Well, we're going to use the Box 2D template for Kirkus 2D projects. And we're going to add all the necessary files bit by bit to uh, set, it, set things up. And this is not really the way you would typically do things, I think, because uh, you can use the the sample loader that uh, is in the trial download for the Rube editor, and that that'll make things a lot easier to set up, especially if you want to get images and everything loading. But I thought I'd make this video uh, to just start from the very basics and show how it works. Um, for a couple of reasons, one is that along the way we need to add the latest box2d source code to the project and uh, there's just a couple of things that you need to change when you do that that I've seen coming up in the forums quite often uh, so we'll see what we can do to um, to solve those problems and um, we'll also take a quick look at how you can obtain an item from the scene and move the camera with the item so we'll look at the the coordinate how the coordinates work a little bit as well. So I'm starting here uh, with an empty folder, and I have this Rube file here, Tank Rube. That's my scene that I want to load into this app. And of course, I'm going to use Xcode to do everything. So over in Xcode, we will start a new project, and it's going to be a Cocos 2D Box 2D project and I'm going to call it uh, Rube Cocos 2D loading something like that and I'm going to put it in this folder alongside my Rube file um, I'm viewing my Mac over the network again using v VNC to record this so <coughs> if the frame rate seems a little bit choppy from time to time that's why that's happening okay uh, we've set up here with our project and we'll just give this a quick run see what it does doesn't really do much I think it just shows a hello world label on the screen and that's about it Okay, running in the simulator. It should be in a second. Okay. Okay, so oh that's right, we have boxes, yeah. Cool. Okay. So this is what we start with with the template. And the first thing we're gonna have to do is bring in the latest box 2D. So we can see in here we have the Box2D. This is what we're going to replace um, to get the latest Box2D. There's a few things that the Rube loader needs. Uh, the main one is that this template doesn't have the um, motor joint. Uh, it's just a little bit outdated, I think. Anyway, so uh, we can get the latest Box2D source from the Box2D uh, code repository on google.com code.google.com and you click on source and then check out and there's two ways you can uh, get this onto your Mac uh, one is to use subversion and you can just copy this here and type it into your terminal somewhere and that will check out the subversion repository and you'll need to have subversion installed and you can check if you have that installed by typing SVN and it should say something like type help type SVN help for usage uh, otherwise it'll say command not found or something like that and if you don't have this installed uh, which you may not if you're using Mountain Lion one way you can get it installed is from Xcode and under the preferences you can come in here <coughs> downloads components and then there's this command line tools thing here and you can click on install to get those tools uh, I don't know why it still 
has this listing here because I've already installed it, so I'm not sure what that's about. But oops. Okay. Um, the other way you can get this uh, is from my site. So if you can't be bothered installing Subversion or you just want to download a zip file with the source code, you can also uh, go to Google and type in Box2D. Oops. Gotchas, because that's one of the pages that I made that I put this on, and click on here, and then there'll be a link here saying about the latest available version. Uh, so I've set up a PHP script that looks at this um, code.google.com website and checks out the source code and zips it for you if necessary, if it has been updated. So you can just download this zip here, which is what I'm going to do. Um, and I will save link. I'll put that next to the other files I've got there. Uh, actually, another reason why you might actually need to do this, even if you don't mind using Subversion, is if you're living in uh, naughty countries like Iran and Cuba and Syria, I think, and one other, North Korea, yeah. Um, apparently, this code.google.com site doesn't allow people to check out source code if you are accessing from those countries. Uh, I guess they're all full of terrorists or something. I shudder to think what would happen if the Iranians got hold of Box2D, eh? They might start making computer games. God help us. <laughs> anyway, so you, uh, all you terrorists out there, can come and get the source code from here. Right, enough about that. Um, so what we're going to have to do with that source code... I'll unzip it first. Alright, now in our uh, files for the project, we'll go into here and we'll see we have a folder called libs. And in here we have box2d. And we can see this box2d.h file here. This is sort of where, where everything kicks off from uh, with Box2D. So what we want to do is replace the folder that that h uh, header file is inside. So I'm just going to delete that completely. And then I'll come back to this uh, zip file that I downloaded and I'll go into here and I'll find the same same place so it's the folder that contains the box2d.h and I'm going to copy that and put it inside the project source code tree so remember it goes inside libs so in there I'm going to paste that so now it's inside here and not all of the files in here are necessary. We can get rid of those too. So we just need the header in those folders. Now, back in our Xcode project, uh, this folder reference that we've got here is going to be well, a group, actually. This is a group. This is going to be outdated, uh, invalid now. Some of the things in here, some of the files that we had before are missing and so on. So I'm just going to delete that one. Uh, and just remove references and then I'm going to drag the folder that we just added in again so that will be inside libs box2d and I'm going to drag this into here again and create groups done okay now I'll just check and see if we can uh, build this and we should be able to build oh no we can't build that's right we have a few things to fix okay uh, so let's have a look at what we need to fix most of these things are to do with oops, this. Do I have to clean this? I just 
just did this a few minutes ago. Okay, that's better. Um, that's more like what I was expecting. Okay, so most, what I was going to say was most of the errors that we get are due to the debug draw having been given a different name and also the GLES debug draw class uh, is a little bit outdated as well. So we'll just go and look at those problems. Um, first problem is due to debug draw has been renamed just B2 draw. So I'm going to just search for every occurrence of B2 debug draw and I'm going to replace that with B2 draw. Replace all. Uh, don't worry about that. And we'll try building again. And next problem we're going to come up against is the constructor for B2 world. Um, it says this function parameter is invalid. And we're not going to use this to create a world anyway because we're going to load it from. Uh, we're going to use the Rube loader to do that, so I'll just comment that one out. And what else have we got? Okay, we have some things down here. This is uh, where we're creating a ground shape for the demo where we saw we were touching the screen and dropping boxes. We don't need any of this. Um, in fact, the entire rest of this init function that we're in here, I'm going to just get rid of it because we don't need any of that. Oh, we do need the last little bit here, don't we? Scheduling the tick. Let's keep that. So keep keep the tick schedule and just uh, take away this stuff. Okay, now we should be able to progress a little bit further. And the last thing we have to fix up is the GLES render class. Um, there's a few problems in this draw transform function and that's mainly due to the members of this transform class being renamed. So position becomes P and this uh, rotation column here has been changed and so instead of having R column 1 we have Q get X axis and instead of R column 2 we have Q get Y axis so I think that should let us compile everything okay now alright so we've compiled but uh, we can't run this at the moment because remember we commented out the place where we we're creating the world so the world is going to be null and then things like this are going to crash all over the place. So um, what we want to do here is use the B2D JSON class to load the world instead of doing new world ourselves. So we need to get the B2D JSON source code and you can get that from you can probably just type that into Google, I think. Yep. Okay, so you can get that from here. Um, and it's on GitHub somewhere. And you can also get it from the... If you've downloaded Rube, uh, you'll probably have one of these on your computer somewhere. And this includes a bunch of the trial, a uh, bunch of the um, sample loader source code. So I'm just going to download that because I know I can get what I want from that one. And so back in Finder in this folder, now we have this one. And I will unzip that. And inside here we can see a bunch of sample loaders. So there's actually a few of these that have the same source code in them because they're all pretty much doing the same thing. So this one here, Box2D Testbed, C++, um, Cocos2D Sample Loader and also the, I think the iOS Vehicles Sample Loader, they all have this code in it. 
Uh, I'm just going to get it from the box 2D test bed one at the top here. And what we're looking for is in the source folder, box 2D test bed tests, and then inside the test folder there's a folder called Rube stuff. And I'm going to copy that folder and I'm going to bring it into my Cocos 2D project here and I will just put it inside the main folder here. So the Rube stuff consists of um, a few files that I use to load Rube files of course and I'm going to get rid of these two here to do with OpenGL because I don't need those and I think they might give us some problems actually so I'll take those ones away. Uh, this is the main set of files that we need and we need to tell Xcode that we want to use them and I'm going to put them in this supporting files fo group uh, by dragging this whole folder into supporting files and clicking that and I'll just check that we can compile now still build okay um, so back to this point part here uh, instead of using new world we want to use a b2d json instance and of course to do that we have to include the files that let us do that so I'll just go up to the top here and I will include b2djson.h and then back down here now we should be able to do something with this json and we want to read from a file and so we need to give a file name and we also need to give a reference to a string parameter for this b2djson to put some error message in in case something goes wrong uh, so for the file name I'm just going to use full path we'll declare this in a minute and over here I'll just use the same name there error message so that will return a world for us so instead of calling new world we'll, we're going to do this right now we have to actually say what this full path and error message are so the full path is going to be an ns string full path and we're going to use cc file utils full path from relative path and we haven't actually exported the JSON file for the scene, but when we do, we're going to call it tank.json. So that will give us the location of the file to load. And uh, we also just need to declare this string variable as well. And I think I need an uppercase S there, don't I? Is that okay? build field. What's wrong with this? Um, can't initialize the parameter. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, this is a ns string, the Objective C type. Uh, we want to pass a char pointer instead. So to do that we have to do this. So this method will give us a character pointer instead of a ns string. Okay. Now this is probably still going to fail because we haven't we don't have this file yet to load. Um, so it's always good practice to make proper use of these error messages 
when we have things like that available. So what I'm going to do here is instead of just blindly assuming that that's going to load correctly, I'm going to check if it loads. And if so, I'm going to say uh, loaded JSON OK. Otherwise, um, could not load JSON, and we're going to give the error message here, and that needs to be a one of those things. So that will print out what the problem was if we have a problem. And I think this is going to say that we want parentheses around there. Okay. Um, now we still will have problems if we fail to load the JSON file because this pointer world here will be null and this will cause a crash if it didn't load. So we don't actually need this one, so I'm just going to get rid of that. And all the other things that assume that the world loaded should really go inside this part of the code here. So I'm going to put those inside this bracketed section so that oops, uh, so that they only get executed if the world actually loaded OK. So that will stop crashes from happening here. Uh, there are a couple of other places in this file that we assume that the world has loaded as well, so we'll go and check on those to make sure they, they don't crash, and they are the draw function. And the draw is going to try and use the world to draw the debug data. So we'll just say that if we don't have the world, don't do anything in this function. And we also need to do that for the tick function. So I'll do the same thing there. And I think there was somewhere else as well, which we will find out in a second because it will crash and then we'll be able to fix it. <laughs> so let's check this builds. And we'll give it a run. OK, so it looks like it's running OK. Uh, we, we took care of anything that was going to crash, cause a crash if the world didn't load it didn't load properly. But the world didn't load. So let's see what the error message says. It's a little bit... there we go. Could not load JSON. Okay, and the reason is the error message was could not open the file. Well that makes sense because we don't have the file in our resources and we haven't even exported it from Rube yet. So let's go and do that. Uh, I will open up Rube and close a few of these things. Actually, keep that one open. And we'll go and grab the Rube file. This one. And we'll load this. So in here we have the good old tank model that we've seen so much of in the last few months or videos. And this is the scene that we're going to load. So I'll just export this So we can have the file to load, and I'm going to call it tank.json, and I'm going to put it in our project inside the resources folder here. So I'll just save that, and back in Xcode, we also need to say that that file is going to be part of the project. So I'll just drag the JSON file into a project and I'll put it in the in with the rest of the resources here. And we will click finish. Now I think that should let us load this scene now. So I'll 
give it another run okay so we've managed to load the world and no no crashes or anything like that great so that's the most bare bones project you can set up using this uh, Rube loader b2g json stuff um, I'd like to go a little bit further because uh, the sort of positioning is a little bit off and I'd also like to take a quick look at how we can make the camera follow this tank when it moves around. So let's check out how we can position the scene a little bit better. So back in the init method after we've done the where are we? Okay, so in this part here, loaded loaded JSON. Okay, we want to uh, the way we can move the scene around. I should say the layer. Move the layer around. We use set position, and this takes a CG point and it'll take an X and a Y Oops. and the coordinates we're going to use here are the coordinates that we want to place the zero zero position of the physics world at on the screen so we'll just go back to Rube for a second and here we can see the little red and white circle underneath the tank that is the zero zero position of the physics world at the moment so this point here if we don't specify anything about where the position should be the default is to put that point at the zero zero position on the screen which is why it's in the bottom left of the screen at the moment so let's move it to the middle of the screen and keep it uh, well let's move it up a little bit shall we um, so back into the source code the X and the Y that for that these are in pixels so the X position we said we wanted to put that at the middle of the screen so that's going to be half of the width of the screen and we have up here somewhere earlier we've done this to get the the size of the screen that we're using so I'm just going to use that variable to use to get the screen size and half is going to be at the middle of the screen and I will make it a tenth of the screen from the bottom. Screen size, height. Okay, so now when we run this again, we should see that the zero zero point of the physics world is now in the middle of the screen horizontally, and it's 10% from the bottom of the screen to the top. Uh, does that make sense? <laughs> it's 10% up the screen. No, it doesn't make sense, does it? You know what I mean, though. Uh, so the zero, zero point of the world is around about here where I'm circling my mouse cursor at the moment. So that's how we can position things. Now, how about scale? Um, scale is done at the moment. The reason we have the scale that we have is because we've got this pixels to meter ratio sitting in the debug drawer and that is by default I think it is 32 yes so we're starting with 32 so that means that one unit in the physics world is going to be 32 pixels on the screen so to check if that is making sense for us Let's go back into Rube and have a look at how things are sized here 
and I hope you can see in the video here but we have green lines here in a grid and the green lines are one unit in the physics world so that will be 32 pixels in the iPhone app and when we have the screen in portrait like this uh, it's 480 pixels high so if we divide that by 32 we should get 15 physics units and if I just zoom out a bit so uh, we can see the red lines these are the 10 meters this is the 10 meter grid so 15 units is here so that's 15 units high and that is about what we can see oops, in the simulator here if we can see it okay so that's that's why we have the display we have at the moment so let's try and uh, control this a little bit more to make it do something that we actually specifically wanted it to do um, and what I'm going to try and make it do is make the height of the screen just kind of just enough to nicely fit in the tank from the bottom to the top and while I'm at it I'm going to rotate the screen as well because you'll find that with the default settings for this template project um, rotating the screen has no effect at all so what I can do to change that sorry for the delay here like I say it's uh, I'm recording this on Linux and it's sending all the information from the, the Mac over the network so it's a little bit slow sometimes okay um, the simplest way I think that you can I just want to force this to uh, become landscape right just for this demo there's better ways to do this but not really the subject of this video so what I'm going to do for this um, video is just to click on here so it's going to be forced to landscape right and one other thing that I found just uh, had to search around on Google a little bit to figure this one out uh, I'm using Cocos to 1.01 here and it turns out that in this application did finish launching uh, this could I think this may have something to do with the fact that I'm using the iOS SDK 6 it was a little bit newer than when this Cocos TD template was set up or something so somewhere around here I have to change this part that says add subview and I have to instead say window set root view controller view controller like that uh, so let's just check what that did so that forces our scene to be landscape now even if we rotate this way uh, so it's kind of the opposite effect now so if you really wanted to have the rotation working properly you'd have to look into that uh, or you can look at the um, the, uh, the other sample source code I have for Coco Study which does that uh, but we're not really going to discuss it too much right now uh, so back to what we what we actually started doing there and that was the scale so let's say I want to show about this area so I want to set the screen height based on this kind of view that I'm looking at right now and if I look at my grid I can see from the bottom of the screen uh, sorry not the bottom of the screen the zero zero point to the top of the antenna of the tank is about one two three four five it's about five units high um, so what I can do is say that come on instead of explicitly setting 
the pixels to meter ratio to a number of pixels per physics unit. I can also do it this way. I can say whatever the screen size height is, I want this to be five units in the physics world. Okay, and I'll run that. now we should see that we're zoomed in a lot more on the tank and unfortunately it seems to be uh, popping through there as well, that's a pain in the ass. So anyway we can see we've got the, the top of the antenna just on the screen there and we have roughly the scale that we intended to have. So that's how you can set up the initial position and scale. Um, Alright so the last thing I wanted to look at was how we can get a reference to this body and move the camera to follow it when it moves. So first let's get it moving shall we? Uh, we can go back into Rube and I have this one set up so that these joints have motors enabled and I just need to set a speed for them and then export that file and then run it again and hopefully the wheels should be moving All right. so we've got the tank moving that's fine now we want to move the view to follow it when it goes away like that because now we can't see it um, while I'm at it I might just make this screen give us a little bit more room see what that does. Okay, oh look at that, the tracks are falling apart. Not what we want at all. I thought I had uh, saved this file so it didn't do that. Now it's not doing it, that's weird. Huh. I'm not sure why it's doing it sometimes and not other times. Bizarre. Okay, so um, we need to get a reference to that body there. So I'm going to bodies mode in the editor and click on this body and we'll give it a name. Oh, it has a name. Tank. That's fine. We'll just use that. So back over in Xcode. Uh, for a hello world layer we need to give this a class member variable so we can store this body somewhere so we'll say b2 body pointer tank body like that and then after we've loaded the world we can say tank body equals json get body by name tank oops oh. tank so that's going to load a pointer for that tank body into this variable here and then in the tick function method um, go down the bottom of this method here and we can do something like this the position is the tank body's position that. So this will give us the current position of the tank in the world in physics units. But we're trying to move the camera or the center of the view and that needs to be done in pixel coordinates. So we need to use whatever scale we set the debug draw to. Uh, so that would be debug draw scale. So we need to multipl multiply it by the debug draw scale to get it in pixels uh, dimensions. And we'll just call this. And what is the debug draw scale? Well, we set it when we started, when we loaded the world, and we set it to. Where is it? 
this thing here we set it to screen size height divided by 8 so I'll just copy this here so we can use get the screen size and go back down to the tick and we'll say screen size and then we can use that to say height divided by 8 that's going to be our scale remember so now we have this position in screen dimensions let's just use that to start with and see what happens so we're going to set position uh, we need to do the CG point make X pose dot Y alright let's just see what that does it's not going to do quite what we want well the view is moving but it's moving the wrong way hmm so the reason for that is because if you think about it this position that we're getting here is the position of the tank and the tank is moving to the right but this set position here is we're setting the position of the zero zero point in the physics world which from our viewpoint is moving to the left so what we really want to do is just use the the opposite of that so I'm just going to put a minus here and we'll run that see what we get now we should at least be moving in the same direction okay looks better moving in the same direction but uh, because we're not really considering the screen dimensions once again we have put the center of uh, the view at the zero zero position on the screen so ideally what we would do here is <coughs> look at the screen size and what we want to do is move move everything half a screen to the right and half a screen up so that it moves to the middle of the screen right so we can do that by saying uh, plus, plus equals and we can say we want to add screen size half of the screen size rather height to go with and half of actually we can do this a little bit simpler by saying we want to just multiply this vector okay so we want half of the screen size up and half of the screen size across and hopefully that should put the center of the tank body in the middle of the screen so this is as far as I'm going to take this video obviously you want to do a few more things like uh, get some images and control the scene and make it a bit more interesting but hopefully this is a reasonable demonstration of how you can set up the necessary files and uh, resources and how you get Xcode and Cocoa Study and Rube and everything to work together and do what you want it to do. So uh, let me know if anything's confusing or if you uh, want some more information about whatever and thank you for watching.